All right. So today we are going to make um, the cream of cauliflower soup and the tomato soup. Um, both of these are very quick. Um, quick cooking soups, uh, both of them take about 20 minutes each. All right, so we are going to start with dicing up our onion here. All right, I only need half of it um, for the cauliflower soup. The other half I will save for that tomato soup. All right, so we're going to peel. Get that skin off of the onion. So it's sticking on there a little bit. And then we are going to medium dice here. Right, I have my two tablespoons of butter in my pot. I am going to turn my heat on just to a low. All right, we are using whole butter, so be careful about that butter burning. All right. So again, I'm going for a medium dice. All right, just make sure it's um, consistent, right? The more consistent your cuts are, the more even they will cook. All right, so our onion is ready. I'm just gonna set it aside while my butter melts and I'm going to prep my cauliflower. All right. All right, so I find the easiest way to cut the cauliflower. There's a couple different ways you could do it. Um, I like to cut it in half and then, oh, sorry. All right, so I cut it in half, and then right where you see that stem meat, I'm actually just going to make a small cut right there, and then all of that stem will come off. So now it's clean, all right, and one swoop there. Okay, do the same on that other one. Again, right there. Right, we had one tiny little piece. Oh, there it is. All right, nice and clean. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut it up um, into some florets. We just want to try to maintain the um, same size of florets here so that way it steams evenly. All right, this will be a pureed soup, so don't worry too much about. Um, them looking too pretty, all right? You're not going to be able to see any of these chunks. And you will use the full head of cauliflower. All right, this cauliflower soup is probably one of my favorites. It has a lot of flavor, very simple. Um, but packs a big punch of flavor in it. All right, so all my cauliflower is cut up. Um, it's nice uniform size. All right, if you end up with um, some straggler pieces um, that break off, um, don't be hesitant. I mean, you can throw them in there. They'll cook perfectly fine. Okay. Um, we just want them to try to maintain the same size. And we want to reserve all the stem too. Don't take off that stem. Um, of the cauliflower, leave that all intact. It'll um, just add more um, flavor to your soup. All right, so low heat, just melting down that butter. All right. All right, now that my butter is melted, I'm going to add in my onions. So I'm going to start to soften those onions just a little bit. All right, I'm gonna add some salt and some pepper. So we, every time I add something new to the pot, I'm going to 
um, add some salt and pepper to it um, at the bare minimum. Um, this is um, increasing those flavors. It's developing, adding on. So anytime you add anything new, continue to add spices to it, all right? If you just keep adding and you're not actually seasoning as you go, um, that flavor is gonna be very diluted. You're not gonna have as much flavor as you would if you were to season it. All right, so I did turn off my heat just a little bit now that I have those onions in there so I can begin to saute those, okay? So it should take a couple minutes here. Um, we are steaming our cauliflower, so I do have a fitted lid. Um, for this pot, if you do not have a fitted lid, you can cover it um, with some foil. Just make sure that it's fitted around the side so that way um, that steam does not escape. Um, if you don't have foil on hand, you can use a bowl or a plate, some, just something to cover that. All right, so you can get creative with what you have. All right, I'm gonna let that saute for a second. All right, and I have my curry powder here, which I'm going to add to that. Okay, so here I have my curry powder. When I add in my cauliflower, I'm going to steam it with that curry powder. And um, there are different types of curry powder, so make sure if you guys are ever making this recipe from home, choose a good one. Um, they all um, do not taste the same or even smell the same. So if you're choosing a cheaper brand, um, it's, you're going to be able to taste that. All right, this one we have here. Oh, it smells so good. All right. So I have these about um, about halfway softened. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add in my cauliflower. I'm going to add some more salt. I'm going to add in my curry powder. I added about two pinches there. You can always add more later. I know it's going to be more salt, but I could have that. All right, I still have a little bit more cauliflower to add to this, but I just want to kind of toss and get the cauliflower that I have in there, kind of coat it a little bit. And that butter. All right. All right. Let me back down. Have the rest of my cauliflower in there. All right. I need to cut this up here for a little bit. And I have a few small straggler pieces there. I'll yeah, right through that. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and cover this. I'm going to leave it on low heat. I'm actually going to move it to um, my stovetop burner. And it's going to steam for about 20 minutes or until that cauliflower is softened. All right. So while we are waiting on that, I will go back and continue to check on it. But while that is steaming, I'm going to start working on that tomato soup. So I always like to utilize my time because I have a 20 minute wait time here. Um, if I don't have anything else to prep or cook, then I will use that time to clean up. All right. So I never just stand around and wait. All right. So I'm going to move this to, to my stove. Okay, so I did set a timer for that, just in case I get busy um, and I forget to go back. You know, I just wanna make sure that I have that timer there going. All right, so I have a new pot here. Again, I'm gonna start it on a low heat. All right, so I'm just going to kind of wipe up my cauliflower crumbs here. All right. So I'm going to use the other half of my onion. All 
for our tomato soup. All right, this tomato soup, very simple, very easy to do. You, I mean, there are a lot of different variations on a tomato soup. Um, if you would like a little bit more of a spice to it, you can add some roasted poblanos to the tomato soup, which would give it so much depth. Um, this one has basil, so you'll have a little bit of that basil flavor in there. All right, our cut here, and we are aiming for a small dice. You can even add some, you know, other hidden veggies in here. Um, you can do some spinach and kale, but it'll all be blended up. You will be able to see little specks of green, um, but it, again, it just adds to that, adds flavor. All right, you can even add carrots to it for some sweetness. So there's a lot of different variations of tomato soup. All right. So here I have my small diced onion. All right, and I have um, some butter here. So I'm gonna add my butter, just two tablespoons for this recipe. All right, and again, melt that down. We don't want to brown that butter, right? We're just melting it. All right, well, that is melting. I'm gonna set my onions here aside and I'm going to chop up my garlic that I'll need for this one. All right, this recipe, how much garlic does it call for? It calls for one, I'm going to use two. I like garlic. I never feel like one clove of garlic does it justice, so I always add a little bit more. I always double with recipe for this. All right, my butter is melted. Okay, butter is nice and melted. So I'm gonna add in my onions while I finish up that garlic. All right, salt and pepper, always. Okay, now that I have those onions in there, I can turn up my heat a little bit. Coat those onions in the butter, get that seasoning incorporated. Okay, and I'm gonna finish chopping up my garlic here. All right, so I'm going to add in my bay leaf here to the onion. Let's see when saute it with it. And my thyme sprig. And I have two thyme sprigs. I'm going to add directly to the pot. All right, and these are just going to add some depth. It's going to bring out that flavor, add some depth to our tomato soup here. Okay. Again, this one, once we get all of our ingredients in there, um, it just cooks for about 20 minutes. 
um, very quick cooking soup. Never made fresh tomato soup before. So much better than the store bought stuff you'll find. All right. So my onions are just about done softening, so I'm going to add my garlic to this. I want to be careful about that garlic. You don't want it to burn. All right, so you don't want to add that garlic in too early on, and those onions still have a ways to soften, and that garlic will burn. You don't want that. Nothing worse than burnt garlic. All right. All right, so now our next step here is we are going to add our tomatoes. And I have another pan here. And we're just going to stir this till it's nice and combined. And then I'm going to add some salt pepper to it. Remember, add as you go, season as you go. Some salt and some pepper. All right, again, this one is going to simmer for about 20 minutes. So I'm going to move this one over back um, to my burner and I'm going to bring the cauliflower soup back over here. All right, so I got the tomato soup on the burner. Um, I just want to check this, kind of try to toss it a little bit. Probably could have chosen a little bit of a bigger pot here, but it's okay, we'll make it work. Once that cauliflower begins to soften a little bit more, um, it'll be a little bit easier to move. And we'll end up pureeing it, so it'll all work out in the end. want to get that moving on the bottom we don't want it to sit in the same place for too long all right so the cauliflower is nice and steamed i think i probably went about 25 minutes steaming but really it just depends um how big you cut your cauliflower will depend how long you cook it. So if you probably cut it up a little bit smaller, it probably won't take as long as it took mine. Um, but I was just going more for uniform size. It, you know, as long as it's uniform, that's all that really matters. So the test for done is poke it through the stem. If it comes out nice and clean, you are good. Um, test several pieces just to make sure they're all um, nice and softened. So once it's softened, then you're going to go ahead and add in your milk and cream. Oops, you're gonna turn up my heat here. All right. I'm gonna add it right in there. Okay. And I'm going to 
add some salt to it. Of course, all of that salt. Um, I'm not going to add the water quite yet that it calls for. I want to see the consistency of what it looks like um, when I'm done pureeing it. So if it appears to be a little bit on that thick side, then I will go ahead and add some of that water. Um, if when I puree it, it tends to be thin, that's okay. Um, if it tends to be a little bit thinner, don't add that water, okay? So just go with that milk and cream to start with. You can set um, some water aside, which is probably what I'll do right now. I'll probably get a cup of water just so I have it ready if I need it. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to bring this to a boil. And then I'm gonna pull it off and then I'm gonna blend it. All right, so my cauliflower's nice soft. I mean, I can cut through it with the, this rubber spatula here so I know the soft. All right, so we're gonna bring that to a heat, bring that to a boil. Um, what we'll be using the lid this time for this. All right, I'm just gonna take a second while this is coming up to a boil. I'm gonna go ahead and get my tomato soup stir. Tomato soup is looking good. It's got a little bit of ways to go. Be careful when you add in that milk and cream in there. Uh, we do not want it to scorch. All right, so once you do add in there, try and bring it to boil. Um, keep an eye on it. We don't want that cream to scorch. There's no roux in here, so it does have a very high chance of that cream or milk scorching. All right, that roux. Um, will prevent that from happening or will you know help ensure that it doesn't happen. So when you do add it in there, keep an eye on it. So it is coming up to boil. You can see it's starting to form around the sides there. That smells so good. All right, there we go. I'm gonna turn it off. Okay. And I have my pad here. And I'm gonna use an immersion blender. All right. Oh, it just came unplugged. One second. All right, so when I use an immersion blender, I tend to hold my pot uh, more at an angle. Um, it's more just getting it um, right. If we just did it straight up and down, what I tend to notice is that splatters everywhere. So this way it kind of prevents that. All right. So if you look at it right now, you can tell it's pretty um, on that chunky side. We want this to be a pretty smooth soup. So I'm gonna keep pureeing it. Even once all of the chunks of cauliflower are gone, um, I'm gonna keep pureeing it a little bit longer. I really want it to be a nice smooth soup. And now that all that cauliflower is blended, I can see it's pretty thick. Not all size of heads of cauliflower are the same, so you really aren't going to know if you're going to need to thin it out until you get to this stage. So mine was pretty big, and you can see how thick it is, so I am gonna add some of the water to it. 
I'm going to add about half of a cup. And then let's see if we can blend that up. And it's still a little thick, so I'm going to add the remaining cup, half a cup. I'm going to put back on the heat while we're curing it. It did cool down a little bit. I'm going to bring it back to a heat. I have not tasted it at this point because even if I tasted it while it was chunky, it would not give us an accurate um, idea of what to look for because you're not going to be able to really taste it until it's nice and blended like this. All right. So I'm going to turn it down. I'm going to grab some tasting spoons. And my tomato soup is ready as well. So as soon as I'm done with this one, you can see how smooth that is. That's what we want. Let me give it a taste. Mm. Definitely needs more salt. Definitely needs more salt. All right, and some more curry. I like that curry powder to be pretty dominant. Start splattering like that, turn your heat down. All right, and then the last thing that we're going to finish it with, I'm gonna give it a taste again, but I'm going to add in that champagne vinegar. And this just helps kind of bring it all together. So let that um, kosher salt, kosher salt is on that flaky side, so it does take um, a couple seconds for it to dissolve. So if you tried to taste it right after putting it in there, um, you wouldn't really be able to get that full flavor. And then you may end up over salting it, so give it a couple seconds. All right. Good enough taste. Definitely need salt. Do not be afraid to season, all right? So when I taste it that first time, um, it tastes like cauliflower. Um, it does not taste um, not as much flavorful as it should, all right? So do not be hesitant to add more salt. Remember that salt doesn't necessarily mean salty, all right? Salt will help bring out the rest of the flavors. All right, if you add too much salt, then yes, it will be salty, but it's finding that right balance of too much salt and, oh, okay, this is just an okay tasting. 
right? It should make you want to dance. That's how you know your flavors are right. So if you aren't dancing, keep adjusting your flavors, All right? So I did add more suds, just keep giving it a stir, letting that salt dissolve. I did add more curry powder too. I like a more predominant taste of that curry powder. So, um, you know, you can adjust to your taste level if you would like that curry powder to kind of, you know, just add a little bit of flavor, but not too much. You know, it's okay to hold back on that, but at least salt. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of pepper as well. And I'm making sure I'm scraping up um, the sides as well as stirring in that center. And I don't want any scorching to happen. All right, give it another taste. Oh, it's almost there. A little bit more salt though. I know it seems like an insane amount, but trust me on this. It needs it. I'm actually gonna add a little bit more of my champagne vinegar as well. I'm not gonna add any more curry powder at this point because I do get the flavor from that that I want. It smells so good. Just wait till you guys make this. And hopefully the last taste. You guys are gonna laugh, but it needs a little bit more salt, I promise. <laughs> We're almost there though. I'm actually gonna add a little pinch more. I just feel it, I feel it in my gut. I feel like it needs it. Don't worry, it'll come with time. You'll feel it. You'll be like, oh, I just know. I just feel it. Just know it needs more. And we salted it as we went too. Yeah. But salt is your friend. Hopefully this time's the last taste. Yes, that's perfect. Perfect. All right, this one is ready to be served. You're just gonna finish this, um, garnish it um, with that uh, chopped parsley that you guys have, and that's it. So whenever you um, are ready to present it, uh, ladle it into a bowl, garnish it with that chopped parsley right there in the center just for a little bit of color too. You see it's pretty white, right? Um, it's perfect. Ready. All right. Now I am going to go grab my tomato soup and we're going to finish that one. So here is my tomato soup. I'm just going to fish out um, my bay leaf and my thyme. All right, and set those aside. There's that thyme sprig. And there should be another bay leaf and a, and there it is, there's the thyme. Right there. And there should have been one more bay leaf, I do believe. Let's see if we can find it. If it ends up getting blended up in it, that's okay, it's not a big deal. Did I only put one? I don't remember. 
Maybe I only need to put one. I don't see another one in there. All right. Okay, so I'm going to um, blend it up. I'm actually going to blend it up with my bay leaf. Um, I want that bay leaf to be incorporated all the way throughout. So I'm just going to rough chop. It's going to get blended, so it's okay. So I'm just going to rough chop that fresh bay leaf. It's going to go right in there. All right, just going to give that a stir. I'm going to go ahead and rinse off my immersion blender real quick. I'm going to bring it back over here and I'm going to blend this one up. with that baby. All right. I'm going to disconnect this. Put that aside. This one didn't take as much to make it nice and smooth because those tomatoes don't have as hard of a consistency as that cauliflower did. So I'm going to again put this back on a low heat. And I am going to finish it with our cream. So this calls for half a cup of cream. Okay. So here is our half a cup. This is going to add some richness to our tomato soup. All right, I'm gonna go grab some more tasting spoons and then we're going to taste and I just as needed. All right, so I can already tell you it's probably gonna need some more salt. Um, again, I didn't taste it prior to blending because it wouldn't have given us an accurate idea. Um, once it's blended, then it's um, blending all those flavors together, so you're going to get more um, accuracy this way. So it's pretty good. It does need some salt, though. Okay, some salt and some pepper. And again, just stir those until combined. I do like um, blending in that basil in there. Uh, if you have your basil on hand, you can blend even more. Um, but just a little bit like this, it just gives it a little bit of depth. Doesn't make it taste so bland. Um, if it was like just pure tomato soup. Okay. You can even reserve a little bit of that basil chiffon on it and then use it as your garnish. Hmm, that was good. Hmm. Doesn't need any more. No more salt, no more pepper, not on this one. This one's good as is. So again, you're gonna ladle this up. Um, if you have saved a little bit of your parsley or you have um, some basil left over, 
then you're going to use that as your garnish in the soup. All right. And then for dinner later, make a grilled cheese to go with it because it's delicious. <laughs>